Why do atheists talk about Christianity so much? In fact, they don't just talk about it a lot, they seem downright obsessed with Christianity. They often say that their problem is religion in general, but if you read atheists' books and look up atheists' blogs and YouTube channels, most of them don't attack religion in general. Most of them are focused specifically and exclusively on Christianity, on defeating Christianity, and on showing why Christianity specifically is just a big pack of lies and it must be destroyed. Methinks the lady doth protest too much, don't you? Isn't it kind of telling how atheists seem to single out Christianity? You know, whenever a preacher who condemns homosexuality turns out to have engaged in homosexual activity themselves, atheists love to make fun of them. But I can't help but think that atheists are a lot like these preachers, raging against something because they themselves are struggling with it, and they are desperately trying to hide it. Atheists spend so much time and energy attacking Christianity, and attacking a god they don't even think exists in the first place, so I can't help but wonder, what are they so afraid of? This is a common accusation leveled against atheists, so today I'd like to explain why, even though every religion I've encountered seems silly and clearly false, I still focus so much effort on Christianity specifically. The TLDR of this video is, at least for me, because Christianity has an unrivaled amount of unwanted influence and control over my life and over the people in my life, both today and in my past. For me, it is Christianity which holds this title by a wide margin. In contrast, atheists like apostate prophet tend to focus on Islam, because for them, Islam has this kind of unwanted control over their lives and over the people around them. To try and explain what this is like, I'd like you to imagine living in the world I'm about to describe. Imagine if everyone around you believed in Transformers. Imagine they believed that a secret robot war of giant robots was being waged all around us, a war in which two factions, the Autobots and the Decepticons, were constantly doing battle even though we can't see it happening. This is because, adherents explain, these robots are able to disguise themselves as ordinary machines, like trucks and airplanes, so obviously you can't see the war happening. That would be ridiculous. But whenever you hear a loud booming sound in the distance, or whenever you see a line of trucks all driving the same way on the highway, it's probably because of the secret robot war. In this war, they explain, the Autobots are the good guys, and they are led by a robot soldier named Optimus Prime. Furthermore, they tell you, we are morally obligated to help Optimus Prime in our daily lives, and Optimus Prime can read our minds to know if we support him. And if we waver in our commitment, a Decepticon might kill us. It sounds crazy, but most of the people around you believe this. Your mother, your father, most of the people you work with, the cashier at the grocery store, the person who interviews you for a job, pretty much everyone. They believe that every truck on the highway might be a Transformer. They believe that every jet plane in the sky is probably a Decepticon. They ostracize people who operate heavy machinery for a living. They vote for such a small military that we have no practical way to defend ourselves as a nation. They try to teach transformer theory in driver's education classes and in engineering courses. They try to make children recite Optimus Prime chants in school. They refuse to fund infrastructure projects for fear of helping the enemy robots. And they categorically oppose seatbelts in cars, nutritional labels on food, and brushing your teeth because, well, Optimus Prime said so. And no matter how many trucks you open to show that they're full of Amazon packages and not folded robot legs, no matter how many How It's Made videos you show them about jet plane manufacturing, and no matter how little hard evidence there is for a secret robot war, they always find a way to rationalize it, giving any number of canned apologetics to make their beliefs completely unfalsifiable. And that's even if you can get that far in the first place. 
first you have to get past the accusations that you are the enemy who wants to harm them through your questions, that you just want to take away their happiness, that you have no purpose in life unless you support Optimus Prime, and that you deserve to be killed by a Decepticon for not believing in the religion of Transformers. That is what it's like being an atheist in America. Why do I care about Christianity? Because to me, it might as well be the religion of Transformers, and it has way too much influence over the kind of society I live in. My particular issues with American Christianity are as follows. While this is not a complete list, it's surprising to me just how far-reaching this one particular ideology is, and how much damage it can do. Number 1. Undermining basic science. Denying and lying about the theory of evolution, which is the cornerstone of modern biology. Denying and lying about cosmology, which shows the universe to be 13.8 billion years old. Denying and lying about geology, which shows the Earth to be 4.3 billion years old. Spreading misinformation about sexual health. Denying and lying about climate change, typically saying either or both, that Jesus is coming back soon so it doesn't matter if we ruin the planet, or that God gave us the earth and it's ours to ruin. Number two, opposing LGBT rights. Opposition to marriage rights for same-sex couples. Opposition to adoption rights for same-sex couples. Opposition to gender reassignment therapy for people suffering from gender dysphoria. Opposition to the right to even have gay sex, which was finally struck down in Lawrence v. Texas 2003. Number three, shaming people for normal, healthy, sexual desires. Number four, opposition to abortion, despite the evidence that fetuses younger than 24 weeks don't feel pain, and despite every thought experiment which shows that even most Christians don't really think that being biologically human is what matters when you get right down to it, as I've explained in a previous video. Number five, opposition to assisted suicide, despite the horrific suffering this forces people to endure. Number six, undermining basic health guidelines around COVID, the recent string of Supreme Court cases that I discussed on my channel, and believing that God will protect them and causing outbreaks by being unsafe. Number seven, kicking children out of their homes for being gay or atheists. As a point of comparison, how many American gay parents or atheist parents kick their children out simply for being Christians? Number eight, endorsing bad reasoning skills, reframing substantive doubts as merely emotional doubts that are okay to ignore, asking, were you there, when scientists demonstrate what happened in the past or simply beyond our immediate vision, and appealing to personal feelings of elation as sufficient justification for claims about reality. This, to me, is the, is the true horror of religion. Okay, it allows perfectly decent and sane people to believe by the billions what only lunatics could believe on their own. Okay, if you wake up tomorrow morning thinking that saying a few Latin words over your pancakes is going to turn them into the body of Elvis Presley, okay, you have lost your mind. Okay. But if you think more or less the same thing about a cracker and the body of Jesus, you're just a Catholic. So why do I talk about Christianity? Basically, because it really bothers me. Yes, philosophically, but importantly, in real life, where it informs the actions of a large majority of the people around me. I don't want to live with a bunch of people who have such a profoundly inaccurate model of reality, and who act on it in the ways I've described. Now, I don't necessarily think there is a moral obligation for me to speak out, mind you. I just really hate living in a society where people subvert COVID restrictions, where they fight against basic education about topics they don't like, and where they try to deny basic rights and resources to the people who need them, all on the basis of, God told me so. When in fact, there is no such thing as God. That's why I talk about Christianity. Because as far as I'm concerned, Christianity might as well be the religion of Transformers.